club, a photography club, dance and basketball. We have a party every Friday for those kids that have earned it. We call it field day. As he's tying down and shocked for hours. Good evening, I'm Mark Ocker. Hi everybody, I'm Maria Stefanos. Fox Undercover's camera, the only one in court today as a jury is given its first look at that disturbing video. We you couldn't even have a conversation with him. He did not want to be here. And it took him a long time to learn the rules, start following the rules, and want to be where he is today, which is... It was hard. We have a very unique education program, and it's all based on rewarding positive behaviors and maybe finding them if they're not doing the work that they should be or they're exhibiting behaviors instead of doing their work. Ever, the public can see for itself what these controversial electric shocks look like in use. No, 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 I guess it would have been inevitable that I'd find these darker sides of it all. I mean, all Senior Enter did was make it sooner rather than later. Although, it wasn't as if I didn't knew such things existed. I just thought they only existed in the past, or at the very least in other countries. Though, by that I mean a few decades. Things from electroshock therapy, or even dousing patients in cold water and leeching them, while tying them up tightly, or even imprisoning innocent women just because they have just because they have issues with corrupted police. And it's not to say that the Rottenberg sorry, Rotenberg Center is not evil or No in fact, they kind of are. Uh, <clears throat> Although it does kind of remind me of why I like asylum like stories. You know the ones. The ones where basically we go through the torture of seeing a person trapped in an asylum, whether they're innocent or not. Particularly when it's with fan fiction with some of my favorite characters. Seeing them having to go through the struggles and trials of making it through. And you know what? I can't decide which fanfic of Asylum-like stories I like the best. So, I'm just going to make it a genre and consider it all underappreciated. As I am here today to review such fics and somehow tie it into all this. Eh, please bear with me. So, where to start on this? Well, I guess there is the concept of one or two places these stories like to go. The first one, and most common, is where a character wakes up one morning in an institution, not sure what's going on, while the whole world around them is telling them that they are mentally sick, yet they are clearly not. This story ranges from having said character have old memories of their life, but yet be shown to be completely insane around them and doesn't help that the world around them is pressuring them into it. And then there is a the much rarer, and my more favorite because of, where the character does in fact have some kind of mental condition, and then we have to see them survive the ordeals of such extreme institutions. Kind of like the students at Rotenberg, I've heard tales of characters who go into these institutions completely sane, then come out as nothing more than a trembling mess. Though, the Rotenberg students have it easy from what history has to offer, let alone fiction. I've heard real life stories that there used to be places where an idea to cure people was to starve them or to tie them up with minimal care and treat them like wild animals. Though one of the things that really bugs me in both the fictional and non-fictional stories is how these places ideas of curing their patients means more or less making them obedient lap dogs who will do whatever is told. And funny enough, in all these stories, the intention usually starts off pretty good. I mean, think about it. If you had a sibling or family member who had a very low functioning autism that makes every day unbearable for them and yourself, wouldn't you want to find some way to help them out and are happier? Though, while this intention is good, it starts to become a problem when said person expects perfection out of it. Such as saying, taking an autistic child who can barely form straight sentences and expects him to be a high-born noble who doesn't need any pills anymore. Kind of like also these fan fictions as well. I mean, just check out their advertisement here. Wouldn't this seem appealing to you, but also a little fishy if you knew what you were looking for? 
What we find is that a large majority of the students come into JRC on large doses of antipsychotic medications. It's doing nothing to control their behaviors, it's simply sedating them. They're not learning, they're not participating in community activities, and they're not engaged in relationships with their family members. Our psychiatrists will slowly and methodically wean them off of these medications. Uh, getting back to fan fiction asylum reviews, many of the setups, as I said, are about normalizing the character. One of my favorites, a story called Her Own Pony, features Pinkie Pie in a possible setup where, after the sonic rain boom, she experienced a split personality where she basically grew a, an imaginary form of surprise in her head. Even though it was harmless, her parents, taken up by fear and propaganda by other doctors around her, thought it would be a good idea to send her away to an institution, where her life ultimately became a nightmarish hell. Kind of like the students at Rotenberg again, actually. Even the big story, Asylum, is basically about Twilight on a new treatment to possibly cure her. You don't even get me started on what they ended up doing with Rarity's backstory. Though, then you have such a story as Feels Like a Monster by Brony Rider. Not technically an asylum-like story, but still something I think is worth mentioning. Now, sadly, this story was cancelled, but I can respect that. He at least made a blog post saying about how the story would have gone, and since it was based on his own real life experience, I can't fault him too much. In this story, we see Apple Bloom contemplating the notion of killing Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon after she's been bullied to death. Afterwards, and after much hesitation, she decides to go to Cheerilee for help and tells her about all these feelings. And what does she do? It, it, to Cheerilee's defense, this is an AU version, so bear with me. And keep in mind, this was based on the author's real life experience. She, and the school board, thinks it's a good idea to send Apple Blue away to an institution for the possibility of thinking about murdering two bullies in her life. So, let me see if I get this straight. It's possible that a student could go up to a teacher, say they're being harassed to a point of wanting to commit murder, and the solution isn't to punish the bullies who drew them into that, but the student affected by it? Stories like this where all you have to be is like, help me, these students are making my life miserable to be put away. Can you see why I'm having issues? And why, despite my busy schedule and my hesitation to make this video, I felt like I had to make it? I mean, really, how would anyone want to do this to anyone? Okay, you can make whatever Yay. you want about it. You can say they're professional, they know what they're doing. But, but it, it's just wrong. It's just wrong. So, so if someone comes along and tells our parents, hey, let's put them on a rack and shock them, it will make them normal, how are the percentage of such patients Yay. going to fight back or say this is wrong? Taking candy from a baby, hey, how about trying shock therapy on a non-verbal and submission to be normal? That sound a little more better? Let's try saying that around the playground instead. I mean, why in God's name would anyone put someone through such torture? And hey, maybe, just maybe, it will solve whatever tics they have. But all you get afterwards is a broken soul who is too scared to do anything on their own. Oh hey Rottenberg, let's strap you up to an electric table. And every time you tense up after we shock you, we give you another shock. How's that sound, huh? Huh? Your happy looking ads looking so good now, huh? If that's the case, why you disabling any comments on your videos on YouTube, huh? I swear, every normie on this earth should be buried in cement, sent down the river, then brought up so we can on their corpses. Hey, you know what I think we should do? I say... Sorry about that. Got a little worked up there. Thanks again, ladies. Anyway, where was I? Uh, oh yeah. I mean, yeah. All this stuff is pretty sad and depressing, and it certainly got me on at the down for a bit too. But there are two things I cannot stand. It's animal abuse, and taking things that happen to autistic people and people with similar disabilities doing this to them. And yeah, the real life ones, we do need to know about this. We need to know how wrong it is. Although I think out of this, and after checking out all these asylum-like stories, I think we can find a small silver lining to it. Bear with me. None of what I'm about to say makes up for that places like the Rotenberg Center does, but the thing is, Rotenberg is, for the at least as far as I know, one of a kind of America. For better or worse, how many of us even knew about this place until you heard about it from myself or Mr. Enter's blog post? I mean, I'm sure it's possible there are group homes out there who if they don't use such extreme treatments, they'll probably treat their patients like crap. They're so rare we hardly even know about it. 
is signs of improvement, I guess. While several decades ago, places like this and worse might have been common, these places are becoming almost extinct. After the video on Fox News, the Rotenberg Center was said to have cut back on the shock belts they had. Though, it won't be victory until places like that are gone or done with. They are like any places that use fear and intimidation. It never wins in the end. Like in these stories, throughout all the trials and turbulations our characters go through, they come out in the end, not because of fear or intimidation, but because of the love and hope they carry on. And that's why I like these fix so well. Despite all these tortures, they never lose hope. Hope that they will make it through. That things will be better in the end. And not just for themselves, but for everyone who's trapped in a similar situation in this story. So, for those of you, like me, who may have lost all hope in humanity because of this, just remember, while we're still a long way from things being perfect, we are definitely have come a lot further than we have before. And although we know that these places exist, and that we are willing to stand up and say it is wrong, then we can make a difference. And to that I say, they wish to be grateful for. Thanks for watching.